Nelson Mandela Foundation on Wednesday launched publicly the audio archive from the infamous Rivonia trial. The audio has now been digitized and will be available on the National Archives website. The major stumbling block to ensure the release of these recordings was that it was recorded in Archeo phone. Sound engineer Henri Chamon played an important role in the digitization process as he invented the Archeo phone, which made it possible for the recordings to be available in digital format. The Rivonia trial was recorded on dictabelts. Dictabelts are floppy cylinders. I've got a dictabelt with me from the NASA. This is a thin loop of plastic, transparent plastic, vinyl, with a groove on it from here to there. And this tiny groove bears actual sounds with recordings. On vintage machine it was played like a tongue thread, like this. It was rotating, bent between two rollers. But now with the archiophone, I play it as if, as if it was a cylinder, round, which has many, many advantages. The audio files which were received from the Department of Justice were in the form of dicta belts. It's the, actually, it's the civil court of Pretoria. It was Pretoria or Johannesburg? It's the civil court of Pretoria who organized the automatic, the systematic recording of trials. Mm -hmm. Should it be uh, in the late 50s uh, for the treason trial in 1957, for instance, or for any ordinary trial like divorce, like small cases, or for very important trials such as Rivonia. Charmant says working on the 256 hours of audio from the recordings offers magnificent information that the public will find riveting. I lived with the Rivonia trial, or at least what was recorded on it, which is 591 dictabets, which means 256 hours. And straining my eyes by watching if I was catching every every loop, every everything, not missing everything because my, the system can drop and, and miss parts. Uh, I spent well, 1,600 hours to do the job within 15 months, mm. between 2015 and 2016, mm -hmm. as a subcontractor of INA. Razia Sala from the Nelson Mandela Foundation says it's fantastic that this archive will be available to the public for free. Recordings are fully digitized now, they've been made accessible. Uh, for many years the recording was unheard because the equipment and the machinery that was needed to play it was not available. So it's taken about four years to get to this point and we think that uh, it's going to be a rich resource for students, for historians, researchers uh, to interrogate the recordings of the Ravonia child. It's, for too long these uh, recordings were, were inaccessible and in, especially during Heritage Month for us to be able to access an important part of our history. The Ravonia child is uh, listed by UNESCO in the World Register of Memories. So that's, I think, is a, you know, it's bringing something that is important, not just to South Africa, but to the world, to life. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like watching uh, live television, uh, but going back over 50 years. Mm -hmm.